As we track the results still coming in from Tuesday's midterms, tonight a message of optimism from the U.S. President. I felt good during the whole process. I thought we were going to do fine. While any seat lost is painful, some good Democrats didn't win the last night. Democrats had a strong night. While control of Congress is still up in the air, one narrative so many were predicting did not happen. No Republican red tsunami or even red wave. Joe Biden and the Democrats bucked historic trends. So let's get the band back together. Washington Post correspondent Karun Demergen, who is here all night long, is back home in D.C. And Kelly Jane Torrance, an editor at the New York Post, who is also here, is still here. We are keeping her now. So, uh, Karun, if we can start uh, with you. Joe Biden made that speech today saying, you know, good day for democracy, sounding so optimistic. How much of that is real? How much of that is show? Well, look, the, the White House and the Democrats were panicking heading into last night, but I think they actually are quite happy. They are breathing a collective sigh of relief that things were not so much worse as they were expecting them to be. And look, this is a credit to the fact that their messaging seems to have worked better than anybody thought. Abortion was on the ballot. Women turned out in full force. This has been a trend that's been going for several elections now, that women are forced to be reckoned with when it comes to the, the, the national elections, and that what happened last night was no exception and just built on that trend. Even even more strikingly, uh, Gen Z, the young people, the kids, <laughs> they're not kids, they're young adults, but they came out, and this has never been really a trend before. Um, people always talk about the youth vote, but the youth vote doesn't turn out, and so people tend to think about that very jadedly and skeptically, but this time, young people actually did come out in droves, and the turnout made a difference for Democrats. Um, normally, you don't see a close margin among independents. Normally, you see the opposition party sweep through and take on huge gains, and that was stopped, because there were a lot of Democrats that came out because independents split pretty equally between Democrats and Republicans, and that is not common but for the way midterm elections go in the first term of a presidency. All right, so votes count, obviously. So, Kelly Jane, last night when you were here, you were partially editing the New York Post while you're here, and, and part of that was talking about what's the headline. I want to show everybody the headline that was chosen today for your newspaper, and it says, the future, meaning DeSantis, Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida. Why, why is he the story of the moment for you? Well, first of all, he was one of the few clear winners. There were so many close races, some that people expected because some didn't expect to be that close. He won by 20 points in a state, as we discussed last night, seen as a swing state. Uh, he was the first Republican to win Miami-Dade County, uh, which is heavily Hispanic, about 70% or more, uh, since Jeb Bush in 2002. And Jeb, of course, speaks uh, fluent Spanish and his wife is Mexican. So this was a big story. Uh, and of course, the uh, crowd at the Santa celebration, uh, I think, made an interesting point. Instead of saying four more years, which of course is what he has now as governor, they were chanting two more years, mm. clearly hoping he will be the nominee in 2024 for the Republican presidential uh, nomination. And of course, many, many, many Republicans are hoping he will too, or at least that his biggest rival right now, Donald Trump, is not. Uh, so that is one of the reasons that he was, was such a big part of the story, because uh, Donald Trump really was one of the losers last night, of course. Right. And he, Donald Trump, in the last few days, started attacking DeSantis, called him desanctimonious, clearly felt threatened by him. Well, he should be. All right. So <laughs> one, of the, one of the concerns heading into the midterm elections was the sheer number of people who had questioned the legitimacy of 2020, you know, who, who were running for office sometimes in positions where they would be in charge of elections. Karun, what happened there? Well, they didn't win. Um, you know, Democrats gambled then on hoping, backing some of these candidates, hoping that they would win their primaries and be easier campaign against the general election. That seemed like it was maybe trending uh, as a mistake heading into last night. There were a lot of Republicans who are Trump supporters, who were questioners of the 2020 election that seemed like they were polling very, very strongly. But they didn't win in most cases. And in many cases, they actually conceded, which is good. But there's one major race still outstanding. Um, we are still watching the Arizona governor's race. Carrie Lake, who is one of those questioners of the 2020 election, who has suggested that she might not accept the results if she loses. This is she's neck and neck, closing the gap with Democrat Katie Hobbs. And, um, you know, this could go on for a long time because Arizona does have a recount law where if things are within half a percentage point, which they are right now, um, this can be recounted. And so this could be, um, create several successive stages of 
are there still going to be major elections where the Republicans either don't accept uh, the results if they're not good, or it just the debate continues on right. ad infinitum, and we're still debating the same issues in 2020 about do election results actually count and stick? So is that is that the race you're keeping a last eye on? If there's one thing you're watching right now, is it Arizona? Well, it's, uh, we're watching Arizona for what that means in terms of just kind of putting that question and election denialism to rest or not, and also what it means in terms of, you know, Trump backing 2020 questioning candidates being uh, rising. But I actually think the one I'm keeping a closer eye on is Georgia. We all are. The, the Warnock-Walker race is headed into a recount. Um, the future of the Senate is, again, just like 2020, going to rest on the outcome of it. We are going to be now having a runoff between these two candidates. There is all the incentive in the world for the parties to drive out the vote for them because a vote for Warnock is going to be a vote for Democrats leading the Senate. A vote for Walker is also a vote for Republicans leading the Senate. This right. is going to be very, very high stakes coming down to December 6th to see if if we have divided Congress or we have unified GOP control on the slimmest of margins. All right. One last thought to you, Kelly Jane. What are you watching for? And I, I realize Karun took two good ones there. <laughs> That's <Sorry>. fine. <laughs> um, you know, I'm watching, of course, uh, Senate uh, Nevada is still, uh, we're still waiting for some results there. Um, but, you know, I am watching not only just specific races, but what the feeling is. And clearly, uh, Republicans had a terrible night, but I'm not so sure Democrats, in a way, had as good of a night as they think. I think they're put into a bit of a difficult position mm -hmm. uh, because Biden did, you know, triumph in many ways. Uh, this was not a, you know, that was seen as a referendum on the president, didn't do nearly as badly as, as they thought. But, you know, look at exit polls, the majority of voters don't want Joe Biden to run in 2024. So Democrats have a bit of a problem. They were, seemed like they were getting ready to push him out and voters don't want him. But hey, what? He's, he's, he's done well. What, what are they gonna do? All right, Kelly Jane Torrance, Karun Demergen, you are amazing. Thank you for spending time with us. Thank you. Thank you.